Welcome everybody to Brush Hair Studios. I'm Aquarian OG and in this video we're going to be going over plaster cloth. This place got a new face, killing Joe Space, got a Joe Tech, chilling in a new face. Blue space in a new place, what did he say? Eat a tech tech, killing like a true play. Step back and I never say no. I was winning over there, now I'm spending out of flow. Got a feeling in the air, but I'm feeling kinda low. Got a ceiling over here, and I think it's gonna blow. Hey, this place got a new face, killing Joe Space. Welcome back to Brush Hair Studios, everybody. As I said earlier, today we are going to be going over plaster cloth. Now, uh, I'll give you a brief description of plaster cloth. It's about as brief as it gets. It's plaster and cloth. <laughs> it's cloth that has been saturated with plaster and then dried and put into a nice convenient roll for us gamers. As you can see, I'll hold it up to this camera. It's literally cloth and plaster. It's a really loose, loose material, material as in the cloth part, so it can absorb and hold decent amounts of plaster because plaster is bulkier than just having some water filter through it or something like that, you know. What I did was I took some, a strip, measured it to what I needed, overlapping a little bit, and you want to have it overlap. I was measuring also, because I have these pieces of styrofoam here that's going to represent hills. I need enough to go over the hill and still be able to overlap. And the reason you want it to overlap is because you don't want it to roll back up after it's dry. You have it like on a case like this. This is a chessboard that I'm making for the Game of Thrones. Um, it's a Game of Thrones themed chessboard. It's going to be scenic, which is the purpose of the, the plaster cloth because I can't make scenery on just plain styrofoam. This material right here is the hard insulation styrofoam and underneath it to give it strength I have a quarter inch thick piece of uh, two by two plywood. You know two foot by two foot square. This is a two foot by two foot table. Basically plaster cloth just needs water to activate. Plaster cloth is real easy. This will be a real quick video because plaster cloth is that easy. If you're intimidated by plaster cloth, just jump in. That's my advice. Just jump in. Try some small projects first, but jump in. Pre-measure, at least, by using the object. So over here I have a container of water. I'm using a long container because it gives me enough um, width to use the uh, cloth, because I have two sizes of plaster cloth. This just happens to be my short roll. I have another roll that comes out about that far. It's about, about a six inch. This is probably about a four inch. All right, so just gonna take it, dunk it in the water. Don't dunk it like you're bobbing for apples. You just need to get it wet to activate it. You'll feel it soften up almost instantly as soon as the water hits it, you don't need to douse it in a whole lot of water. And if you find any dry spots that didn't quite get dumped, use a wet spot that's already wet. Now this will be kind of tacky once it's wet. So you got to kind of have your ends already established. You know, know where the ends of your cloth are. just get it nice and even evenly spread out you don't want any lumps unless you intend to have wrinkles in the case of like maybe grass fields or something you might want to add some texture points you know like a little crimp right here or something like that to represent like a small natural unevenness in the ground so kind of look at grounds before you kind of start doing landscapes kind of like look at them and get like a an actual visual for it because landscapes can be tricky and landscapes are also fun now, if you have a dry spot once you start laying your plaster cloth take your fingers dunk it in the water and just, just rub it plaster cloth is really really easy to work with and extremely extremely useful once you get decent with it and you don't even need to be good with it all you have to do is try <laughs> We all got to start somewhere. You use it enough, you'll be good with it. You'll be all right. Your confidence will grow. All right. 
So now that we have this set down to where we want it, if you have like a spot like here where these heels are and you kind of want them tighter to the obstacle that you put down, slide the cloth. Now you can use a brush for this. Some of the cloth kits that you'll find on the market comes with sponge brushes, but I find the best tool in the box is just an index finger. If you don't have an index finger, use another finger. And just smooth it out like that. And I'll make sure you got it up. I'm not too worried about it being exact on the edges because I'm going to take and do another cloth over that side anyhow. So the edges aren't a huge concern as far as coverage. And plus it'll let me see my lines a little bit too. So I'll still be able to measure out because I'm going to take and go over this with a pencil once the plaster dries and redraw my squares so I still got my visual when I start building the terrain and pencil is good enough that it'll be hidden once I put down all the other paints and stuff that's gonna go down on it flocks and paint and color and models and special effects this is getting some special effect water too so We are going to have a pretty, 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 I'm talking gorgeous chessboard once this is done. I'm stoked about this. Right. Turn this so I can see this in. What you doing over here? This is just like doing a sculpture. You want to rub it, you want to make sure it has enough water. If you've ever done clay sculptures, this will have a familiar feel. Or clay pottery, this will have a familiar feel. You'll be right at home. And this stuff sets fast and dries fast because it is thinned. Now, I'm going to let that go right there. Start the next strip. Now this strip, I'm going to do this because it is going to go over the hill. So we're going to get over that hump. All right, same thing. We just did this, so it should be easy. I like to take and put a finger in between the two layers right there. So just so you can tell, once it gets wet, I'm gonna do a quick dunk. You don't need to hold it in there. You don't need to douse it. It just needs to touch the water. Nice and easy. I'm gonna hit this end a little bit so it has something sticky to work with, all right. Take a boom and lay it on out, just like you did the last strip. Now I'll kind of overlap it a little bit over the last one so you have that uh, continuation. And it won't look like you didn't know exactly what you had in mind when you put it down. Be sure on your placement. Plaster cloth is forgiving, but like I said, it dries fast. And when it dries, it's just going to dry hard. You'll have a shell once this is dry because it's plaster. Number one, it's going to function like plaster. <laughs> it's a different type of plaster delivery because the method of placement is through the eyes of a cloth. You want to kind of hurry through this a little bit. You'll have some spots sometimes on the edges where the paint, I mean the paint, the uh, plaster kind of doesn't cover up all the holes. So what you can do is take and run some plaster. Some of the extra wet plaster up and kind of like fill that in and what I like to do sometimes is take Elmer's glue and brush over those because Elmer's is thick it'll hold there and it'll also harden so you have a match or match one of my quick plaster cloth tips Elmer's glue all right 
Now this edge right here where you can see where the cloth meets the cloth, you can actually just do some wet fingers and smooth that down. It'll blend right in. This cloth is really thin. It's ready to work with you. And with that heel, it's pretty much done on that front. It helps if you press down your edges, not press, but you know, if you smooth down the edges for the next piece of cloth. Now when you put like, uh, like I have like little divots in the ground right there, the plaster cloth actually gives it some uh, a natural dirt look because it don't look so styrofoam cut. You know, more natural. this down. Now with me having this plywood board under here and that water being on the plaster cloth, I really don't have to worry about it warping because the plaster cloth doesn't hold enough water for it to really be effective in warp. Sound like a Warhammer joke. It doesn't have enough effectiveness to really warp the uh, board because the board needs more than just that little bit of water and the cloth dries so fast that it almost makes it not a thing. Not a thing, bada boom. Alright. Okay, so that's there. Now you can see how it's coming together. It's starting to look like not styrofoam. Once this is all down, I'm going to take and put a coat of Elmer's glue over it to give it that layer of protection so when I put the paint down, because my paint is water-based, it won't reactivate the uh, plaster. And that's pretty much it for plaster cloth. Plaster cloth is really easy. If you, uh, if you guys have any questions... Feel free to ask in the comments or get a hold of me on twitch.tv forward slash the Aquarian OG. If you would like to purchase some plaster cloth, I have a link down below. This is the Aquarian OG bringing you a demonstration with plaster cloth. Signing out.